we're back. Coming up on this edition of the Die Hard Den podcast, Shawnee J and I look at the Lions' undrafted free agents for 2020. Then we take a look at the Lions' schedule and give our predictions for wins and losses. And finally, in two points conversion, we take a look at the Lions' state at offensive guard. All this and more coming up on this edition of the Die Hard Den podcast. Watch out. Here comes that roar. What up, though? This is Kurt Steele, and welcome to the Die Hard Den podcast. And as always, I'm with my man, Shawnee J. What's up, good people? Hey, hey, it's good to be back in the saddle, bringing you guys some fresh content right here on the Die Hard Den podcast. So first up, as we always do at this time, it is time to tell me something good. Now, this week, our tell me something good is really one thing. Matthew Stafford today on a Zoom conference with the media in Detroit. He revealed that he's working out in Georgia with some of the players on the roster, as in Kenny Galladay, Danny Amendola, DeAndre Swift, the young receiver Cephas, Isaac Nada, and a few other players down there in Atlanta. He's out there. They're running routes. He's throwing them the ball. He's getting them acclimated to catching the ball from himself, uh, especially some of the young guys like DeAndre Swift and Cephas. They're not used to catching the ball from Matthew Stafford. He has one of the strongest arms in the NFL. And if you look at Swift, Swift played with Jake Fromm down in Georgia. Jake Fromm did not have one of the strongest arms in college football. You know, that's one of his uh, knocks was he didn't have a strong arm. So it's going to get uh, be, excuse me, it's going to take some time to acclimate themselves from catching the ball from a rocket arm like Matthew Stafford. But he's showing some leadership down there in Georgia working out with those guys and making sure they're in shape coming into the season. What you got, my man, Shawnee J? I love it. I'm glad to see Stafford taking a leadership role. He mm -hmm. still loves to play the game. I'm glad to see him back working out. His back is healthy. Um, he's been doing football activities, doing the best he can, doing this um, COVID-19 lockdown, uh, working out with some of the guys, some of the rookies and some of the veterans. It's good. Um, get you, like I said, you know, especially Cephas and Swift. Uh, I'm happy to see them back on the football field, getting ready for the um, 2020 season. I'm still a big Matthew Stafford fan. Right, right. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go over the undrafted free agents that the Lions signed this offseason. We're going to play a game called 53 Practice Squad or Cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over quickly the undrafted free agents. And we're going to, uh, China J is going to tell me if they're going to make the 53 man roster, if they're going to be on the practice squad, or they're going to be cut. So, you ready to do this, my man, Shawnee J? Yes, I am. Okay. So, if you're watching this uh, video on YouTube or Facebook, here is the names of the free agents that the Lions signed uh, out of college this offseason. All right. First up. Tight end, Hunter Bryant out of the University of Washington. Big guy. He can play wide receiver or tight end. Very long, lean. He's fast. He can stretch the field. He can play a big tight end. He's kind of like a Brandon Ingram out of the out of uh, the New York Giants. He kind of reminds you of that type of player. His not coming out of college is that wasn't a good run blocker. But if you look at the system that he played in at Washington, it was a spread pass happy offense where he didn't have to really block that much in the run game. So Hunter Bryant, 53, practice squad or cut? 53. I'm once again, I'm surprised this guy wasn't drafted, just like Bo Benjamin who wasn't drafted last year. Mm -hmm. Top run blocker was Bo, and the tight tight the top tight end is um Hunter Bryant this year. Surprised so he didn't take a flyer or even a seventh round flyer. Right. So I think he'll make this um, 53 squad, if he sh shows the same abilities he did in college, because you know how much Matt Patricia loves tight ends, and I can easily see him keeping four tight ends. I think we have one of the best um, tight end rooms in the NFL next year. 
All right. Next up is Aaron Sipos, punter at the University of Oregon. Excuse me, at the University of Auburn. Big punter, Australian rules guy, a little long in the two for a rookie. He's already 28 years of age. Uh, the knock on him out of college is that he has a decent leg, but he's not accurate inside the 50, and he needs to get his uh, yards per punt average up to play in the NFL. So, uh, Sipos, 53, practice squad, or cut? I think he has a 33, a third chance to play in all three. He needs to be cut. He's going to practice squad. If the Lions aren't happy with the punting, they decide to keep and they have one waiting. But the punting job is wide open for the Lions. Like if he shows anything in practice and, and the preseason games, if there are some preseason games, he has a good chance of being the Lions' starting punter because I'm not even sure who they have on the roster for the punters to let Sam Martin go. Right. So that job is wide open. Right. The current uh, punter that they have, they had Matt Wild. But they, they, he's no longer on the roster. They have uh, Jack Fox, it was, who was a Covenant free agent last season, on the current roster for the Lions as a punter. All right, next up, we have Jalen Elliott, safety out of the University of Notre Dame. Uh, six foot, 205, runs a 4'8". Um, he was a captain on the defense at the University of Notre Dame which we already have another captain on the roster, which is uh, Julian O'Quarr. So, with Jalen Elliott, 53, practice squad or cut? Good practice squad, Cannon, because we already have too many safeties. All right, moving on. Jeremiah Denson, he is a slot DB out of the University of Auburn. He's 5'11", 191, ran a 4'6", 40. Uh, the guy reminds me of a little bit bigger Quandre Diggs as far as the height is concerned. Uh, he has a nose for tackling. He can definitely hit. He can cause turnovers. So, 53, practice squad or cut? Um, practice squad. Once again, we had some corners. We drafted Akuda. We, um, we signed True Fat. We got D Virgin and Mike Ford and O Warrior, you know, we got plenty of cornerbacks, so we kinda hired to um make the squad, but he might be a good practice squad guy. Right, and Justin Coleman has that that uh slot corner on lock right now. So next up right. is uh Bobby Price, Joker, which is a bigger uh safety slash line uh small linebacker type of player, six foot, two sixteen, uh ran a four four three forty, has a good burst. Uh, what do you think in a, in his measurables as far as his size is comparable to Tracy Walker? So, 53, practice squad or cut? Definitely, I want to see this guy make the 53 squad. Um, mm -hmm. so off the bat, like I said, our good friend, the math by him, Kent Lee Platt, who's good at analytics, mm -hmm. he's pretty much a PFS guy himself, he gave him a 9.96 athletic score. Rascal, almost a perfect 10. Mm -hmm. Like he says, good size, good speed, good ability. You don't see too many athletes like that. I want to see what we can do on the field. I mean, there's a lot of good athletes, sure, athletically. Build like Tarzan, play like Jane, but I hope he's not <laughs> like that. I want to see him. Um, good athlete, I want to, like I said, I just want to see what we can do. I'm very intrigued by this prospect. I'd like to see both him and Hunter Bryan make this 53-man squad off the bat. All right, so moving on. Now, next up is Luke Sellers out of the South Dakota State University, the uh, FCS school. Um, fullback, big guy, six foot, 250, 53, practice squad or cut? Once again, the fullback position is um, up for grabs too because the current fullback, Ken, what's his name? Oh, Nick, right now, the Nick Bowden. Fullback, Nick Bowden. Bowden. Yeah, he. he Exactly. He um, had trouble staying healthy, you know, for mm -hmm. the last two years. So this rookie, undrafted rookie, if he can do the same thing for Fowden, he can block and do what the Lions want him to do and ask him to do. He has a good shot of making the 53, so I'm going to say between 53 and practice squad. All right. Next up, last but not least, we have Steven Wirtel, long snapper, out of Iowa State. 53, practice squad, or cut? 
well, the meal can't play forever. You, you know, this might be the meal's last year. Right. And I'm going to, you know, because I love the meal, but this, this is um, 17th season. He's almost 40 years old. You know, ever since he screwed up that um, um, extra point staff against Minnesota, his rookie season, he's throwing the best most snappers in the game. But once again, he can't play forever. Right. Um, this <laughs> guy, I'm going to say practice squad. Practice squad. All right. All right. So there you have it. Uh, the undrafted free agents for 2020. Shawnee J has given his opinion. 53 practice squad or cut. Hey, you're listening to the Die Hard Damn podcast right here, uh, either on YouTube uh, or Facebook, or you're listening on one of the platforms, Apple or Spotify. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the Lions 2020 schedule. And at the end, we're going to give our predictions for the schedule. So if you look on your screen coming up, all right, week one, you got Chicago followed by Green Bay. Then you have Arizona, the Saints, the Jaguars. Uh, You have week five is a bye. So then you have Atlanta, the Colts, and you have Minnesota. So we turn to the second half of the season. Looking at you have Washington, you have Carolina, the Texans are playing uh, at Thanksgiving at Fort Field. Then the followed by the Bears, Green Bay, the Titans, and uh, the Bucks, and then ending the season with a game with the Minnesota Vikings. Now this is the first uh, first time in a few few years that we haven't played Green Bay at the end of the season and we're playing at Lambeau earlier in the fee- uh, earlier in the season. So, so we won't get that frozen tundra, uh, when we play in, uh, green Bay this season. So quick look at the, at the, uh, schedule. Now we'll say this. They said that the lions have probably the easiest strength of schedule going off last year's records in the league. So, what, are, what is your win-loss prediction? I don't want to know what games, but what do you think the record is going to be for the regular season, my man? For answer to that, I just want to say a uh, uh, um, question, or that statement irks me all the time, <laughs> about easy schedule. There is no easy schedule in the NFL. I mean, right. you can win or lose any given time. There is no easy schedule. It's not mm-hmm. like in, in college football we can schedule some cupcakes at the beginning. Right. But with that said, I, you know, we healthy because we lost 20 players last year to injury. Including Stafford, if we stay healthy, I'm going to say 11 victories. 11 victories? Okay. All right. So, me, I'm going to probably say 9-7. Uh, 9-7 is what I'm going with this season. I, I think that you know, we'll push for one of those extra playoff slots that's going to be added this season. So, you think 97 is good enough for um, Patricia and Quinn to keep their job? I think it could be because it's a building block. If you look at anything's going to be better than the last, the first two seasons that they had in Detroit. So, I mean, any type of uh, a significant improvement will help them keep their jobs. I mean, going from what, uh, what three three wins last season, and you know. <laughs> Any type of significant improvement will help them keep their jobs. And if it's a playoff push, definitely will help them keep their jobs. Okay. All right. So, Fair enough. <laughs> all right. So now it is time for um, our two points conversing this week. Um, we already went over the schedule. So one thing that was announced uh, by the governor of Michigan uh, that – Say, don't expect the Lions to have um, a large crowd at the stadium, which is much like any most of the states. So, what do you think about the NFL having uh, decreased decreased crowd sizes for this upcoming season? It's what I expected. I mean, it's too soon after a pandemic to expect to cram sixty thousand, a hundred to a hundred thousand football fans in the stadium in both NFL and college football. Right. It's still we got to practice social distancing because um, I hope we're, you know, well advanced. It'd be great to have football back when it's a challenge to those guys. So, you know, there's no social distancing in football, obviously. Mm-hmm. They're close together. They're tackling each other, piling each other. And um, 
like I said, as far as the fans, I, I think, like you said, I can see maybe small crowds, definitely small crowds. No more than maybe 10,000 fans scattered around the stadium. Once again, keeping social distancing. Right. It's going to be seem kind of strange, but at least we have football, so I'm all for it. Right. I think that's what I expected. I think that those secret season ticket holders are going to be the first ones that's going to be really up uh, for those uh, seats. There's going to be uh, uh, quadrants of the stadiums is going to be really shut down, and you're going to have you know probably good big spacing in between. Uh, the the fans is going to be in the stadium, so you're going to have where it's going to be probably three, four seats between fans. I can see that happening. Right. So um, I, I think it's by necessity, uh, by need to keep everyone safe. I know everyone want, are itching to get everything back to normal, but uh, to really decrease the um, what they're calling is going to be a bounce back for COVID-19, where it's going to come back and rear its head again. Uh, to keep that safe, I, I would say that the NFL and, and other sports are really uh, have the right idea by, you know, decreasing crowd sizes. Uh, I know the that the other sports are looking at starting off because they're starting sooner, starting off with no fans and then kind of um, heading in the direction where limited crowd sizes until the pandemic has truly passed. All right. Yes. All right. Next up. I know you want to talk about this, the Lions' current situation at backup offensive guard. So the two big names that you really want to talk about, my man, is uh, Stenberg uh, versus my man Big Bo, you know, your guy, uh, ben, uh, Bo Ben Swashel. Who do you think will win that, that uh, backup guard position uh, coming into the season? Well, I'm going to tell you, you mentioned both my guys. You know, I've been doing some research. You know, I love Bo. Uh -huh. and I'm a big Bo, man. You know that. I know you probably irritated <laughs> by how much I'm a Bo. Hey, man. Have, just... hey, hey, have your love affair, brother. Have your love affair with the dude. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> but Stenberg also intrigues me. And mm -hmm. I want to see both Stenberg and Bo be our starting guards. Right. I mean, it's very possible because I said, I have a theory. One of the reasons why they may let um, Graham Glasgow, who I really like a lot too, mm -hmm. walk is because they like what they see in Bo. They think Bo might be ready to step up. Mm -hmm. And the Lions just drafted two guards yep. this year. And um, Jackson. Stenberg. And Jonah yep. Jackson. Yeah. Stenberg is nasty. Stenberg mm -hmm. is nasty, I can say it. Yeah. Very nasty. Got that attitude. So I'd love to see him and Bo start. And since we're on the subject of guards, I post this in our group. Uh -huh. What do you think about the possibility of um, Larry Warford coming back to the Saints release? Now, I, I did see that, and that was my next really real topic. Um, is it worth the Lions looking at the War Daddy coming back to Detroit? I mean, that's his, that was his Twitter handle, War Daddy. Um, he made three Pro Bowls uh, down in New Orleans. Uh, I think that the right. price of – I think his price got a little bit expensive. He wants $7 million per season. That's his asking price right now. I don't think he'll make. I, I don't know if he'll get that many takers at that price. I mean, but he's a good, he's a good, solid, starting offensive lineman. So um, I think that it's worth a look to see if they're gonna bring him back. But I'm not particularly sold on that. All right. So looking at the Larry Wofford, um, that seven million dollars. What do you think about the asking price? Well, I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, seven million. Um, the Lions got it. They got, you know, like I said, they got cap room. Mm -hmm. Um, it all depends on if they think that he's worth it. Will he be an upgrade? Is he worth it? He's a three-time Pro Bowl guy. He got his career started here in Detroit, but took off in New Orleans like he usually does with his guy, his Lions. Is on the Lions. You know, I like the young guys. I want to see the young guys play like Stenberg and Bo. And, you know, but um, it's, if they bring Wolford in, it's not going to be as a backup, it's going to be as a starter. Right. So I can, I like Wolford. I was disappointed to see him leave. And just like Sue, um, I was disappointed to see Sue leave. If they bring him back, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be cool with it. But if they don't, I'll be cool with it too because I want to see what the young guys can do. But keep in mind, this is a make or break year for both Clint and Patricia. So they might be willing to pay that $7 million if they think. The Wharf can help, you know, keep their jobs. <laughs> right. Hey, you're listening to the Die Hard Den podcast right here on YouTube 
if you listen on the, the podcast uh, platform, Apple or Spotify, thank you for joining us uh, right here on the Die Hard Den podcast. All right. So, I mean, looking at um, one more thing for the uh, our two points conversing this week, uh, Tracy Walker. Um, if you followed the national news, uh, there was a tragic uh, shooting in Brunswick, Georgia. A young man, um, Ahmad Arbery, was uh, gunned down by uh, father and son um, uh, Gregory and Travis uh, McMichael down in um, down in uh, in Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, while the young man was jogging. Now, the young man, uh, Ahmad Arbery, uh, is the cousin and high school teammate of Tracy Walker. And Tracy Walker, in an interview with Michael Rothstein of ESPN, said that he's going to dedicate this season to the memory of his cousin, Aubrey, and he's going to wear uh, a T-shirt under his jersey uh, in honor of his cousin, and he's going to write his initials on his cleats for every game, and he's, like I say, he's going to dedicate the the season to his, the memory of his cousin. He said that that Arbery was a very Arbery was a very uh, gentle and uh, good soul, and that he did not deserve what happened to him uh, down no, he there didn't. in 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 Georgia on February twenty third. So um, I, I feel for um, that young man. I mean. Brunswick High, and you look at the Lions roster from the last two seasons. I mean, you had um, well, you had Tracy Walker, uh, Justin Coleman, Darius Slade. So that's all, you know, touching you know either current Lions or former Lions that's from Brunswick um, and that played at that high school. And Tracy Walker wears twenty one, which was uh, Arbery's number in high school uh, on the you know. That's his current number. So, I mean, uh, my condolences out to the Walker family and to Arbery's family. Uh, they think that was a senseless murder in the middle of the street. I mean, their video is viral where the young man is just jogging down the street. And you just see um, him get murdered in the middle of the street. Um, yeah. One, one thing I will say um, – is that that the two men, uh, the father and son, have been arrested and charged with murder and aggravated assault. It took the state to get involved uh, with that case to, for an arrest to be made. The local government did not take care of that uh, case, so it got escalated as far as once the video went viral, where it got shared enough that you know it it caused a break in the case. So, you I mean, looking at um, that, um, it, that's just a horrific um, a story. Um, I just can't imagine, you know, what's going on with his family and to see that. And Walker said he had to watch it over 100 times. I mean, literally, and he just got more angry and, and upset the more he watched it. Yeah, um, it's very senseless. That whole notion that, they thought he was a robbery suspect, you know, it was a, it was debunked fast because no robberies reported at the time. Um, they said they saw him walking through a house construction. He just looked curiously for three minutes. Maybe he should have been there, but he didn't take nothing. Even the owners of that home being be, be constructed said he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't take nothing. Nothing was ever stolen. At the time of his murder, he had no stolen merchandise on him, so... That was just a, an excuse and a lie. So yeah. I hope those two guys get get theirs and go to prison for life, if not the death penalty, because Georgia does have the death penalty. Yeah, I, I would say um, if if walking through a, con, a house that's being constructed was a, is a crime, then you know they deserved it by death. I'll be dead myself because I, you know, I'm living in North Carolina. We built our house down here. Uh, we had it built in. We would go through the neighborhood because it was an up and coming neighborhood. People were, you know, a lot of construction going on when we were building, and we would go through, you know, houses that, you know, or, you know, ain't like we would touch nothing or anything like that. But, you know, just to go through a frame house or you know look at floor plans and, you know, look at, you know, how other how other people had their house constructed and we were how we were building our house. You know, there's no cause for that reaction to that video, you know. 
it just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and it was an excuse, and they didn't even know about the video existing. They just used that as an excuse to shoot him down, which was quickly debunked, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah. So, um, and the the fact that these two individuals were linked to the local district attorney uh, in that area, you know, they you know worked, and then to find out that their father was a former police officer. You're a former law enforcement. You should know, you know better. You know better than to, to uh, take your, to take martial law into your own hands and to take out and, and just shoot somebody, gun someone down in the street. You know better than that. Shame on that. Shame on those individuals. Yes. That, that that's not your place to go and gun someone down in the street in cold blood. I don't care what they exactly. do. I don't care what they do. You should if anything, you should have called the police and had them if you think of someone, you know what I'm saying, you should have called the police and, and reported the crime. But there was no crime being reported because the guy wasn't doing nothing but jogging through the neighborhood. I mean, it's right. senseless. Senseless. Uh again, condolences go out to uh, Tracy Walker and his family and the family of Ahmad Arbery. All right, so that's all the time we have for this week's show. So, my man Shawnee J, tell the people how they can tell the people how they can find you on social media. You can look me up on Facebook. That's right, Mary Ann. Uh, my name is Sean Jennings. You can send me a friend request, and if you want to join the Detroit Lions Truest Fan Group, the Lions Lions Fan Group on Facebook, just send a request there too. We'll be happy to add you. All right. So you can find myself uh, on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, at Curtis Steel 14 uh, You can find the show, uh, Die Hard Damn Podcast. We're on Facebook. Then you can absolutely look us up. We have our YouTube channel. And then on uh, Twitter, it's at uh, Die Hard Damn Pod T1. On, um, on Instagram, it is at Die underscore hard underscore den underscore podcast uh you can email the show uh die hard den podcast at gmail.com and if you're watching on youtube please hit the like button uh excuse me hit the subscribe button so you can get notifications you know hit the share uh same on facebook please you know hit the like hit the share and, you know, we'll look forward to bringing you some more and fresh, uh, more content, fresh content coming up soon. So we appreciate all of the watchers and listeners to our podcast. And we are definitely looking forward to in the upcoming weeks, bringing you some more fresh content. And we look forward to the upcoming NFL season. We hope it happens. We hope it happens on time, even if it's kind of abbreviated. Um, we hope we get some football back soon. So, for my man, Shawnee J, this is Kurt Steele of the Die Hard Den Podcast, and we are 